Jerks and Profar suffered a really concerning looking head injury here when he collided with his own teammate, and then things got even more concerning as we saw him collapse as he was trying to walk off the field. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. Right off the bat, I wanna point out that we did see Profar being carted off the field, he looked to be fully conscious, was moving his upper extremities, and certainly things didn't look as bad as they initially were early in the play. Also, the purpose of this video is not to like litigate how this was handled. I know there's a lot of comments on social media about the Padres medical staff and how things look to transpire. Instead, I just wanna objectively step through this scenario to give you guys some insight about what a medical staff is thinking and how we sort of go about these evaluations. Let's just walk through this step by step, starting with the actual injury itself. So clearly the contact here, you can see that there's gonna be obvious concern for a concussion or a head injury just because of the impact onto Profar's head slash neck, but then also because of the amount of what we would call neck hyperextension, where his head is kind of rotated off to the side, we also have to have a high index of suspicion for a spinal cord injury, for a neck injury. Also, Abram's knee almost lands a little bit more in the neck slash sort of jaw region as opposed to directly in the skull. So then that introduces a possibility for things like a jaw fracture or injury to some of the structures like the blood vessels within the side of the neck. A sequence like this, whenever we're responding to an athlete on the field, there's sort of a protocol that we're going through as the medical team. When we first get out there, of course, number one is, does the athlete have a pulse, all right? Presumably you see what happened, but if the athlete just collapsed, you assume the worst, you make sure they have a pulse and they're at least conscious when you first get out there. So now with Profar, he's alert. He looks like he's talking to the training staff. He appears to be conscious. He's certainly not in any sort of cardiac arrest. And so then you have to start of work at the most severe cases and then work your way forwards. In this case, the most severe thing we're gonna be worried about is going to be something like a neck injury, just based on the mechanism of the neck really getting hyperextended and bent off to the side. So the medical staff here is trying to ask him about symptoms. They're asking him, do you have any numbness or tingling in your fingers? Do you have any sensation loss in your legs? This next point then is really important here because we see Profar sit up. And basically what we try to do before we let the athlete sit up is make sure that we're not worried about their cervical spine. So hopefully in this sort of moment, we're going through, we're palpating along the neck, we're checking range of motion. We're doing basic, simple things to clear the cervical spine before we then allow them to sit up. Once the athlete does sit up, then we're trying to see, okay, do you feel dizzy? Do you feel lightheaded? you're kind of diving a little bit deeper into the detail of what might be going on. These situations are always really hard and you have to give the benefit of the doubt to the medical staff because the athlete always wants to get up the f on their own. They always wanna walk off the field on their own and it takes a lot to really convince them when things are seriously bad that no, you can't, you have to stay down. The moment here that I think concerned me the most was that we saw Profar really seem to kind of struggle still as he was starting to get up. And then at one point here, we actually see him lay back down on the grass. So kind of at this moment where we see him lay back down, that's a sign he's really still not feeling well. He's tried sitting up, he's gone backwards. That's where you have to really kind of reassess things and think a little bit more about getting him off the field safely. So now we get to the moment where Profar is walking off the field. And I will say if somebody just has a concussion and you're not worried about a cervical spine or a back injury, and they're able to walk, they have good balance, it's totally okay to let them walk off of the field. So assuming he was functioning well before this moment, totally safe to at least let them try to get off the field. Again, if you're not worried about a neck or a spine injury. But as you see here, things can change. He becomes presumably lightheaded, potentially passes out, loses consciousness maybe, hard to say, but ultimately collapses. So now at this point, you know, you see them putting their the legs up here, presumably to try to help get some blood flow back to the heart. The staff member over here is now calling for the cart to come out. That's what that fist up sign means. And now we finally, after what reportedly was quite a bit of delay, which I'm really not sure about, we see the cart come out. They get him on the backboard to stabilize his spine. We see the cervical collar that's put on to protect the neck, and we see him taken off the field. One possible explanation for why he passed out could be the location of where Abram's knee strikes his kind of jaw slash neck. All of the blood vessels that help to control some of our blood pressure aspects sit along the side of the neck in the carotid artery. There's pressure sensors in the carotid artery that respond to high blood pressure by vasodilating to decrease that blood pressure. So if you have a really hard impact to those blood vessels, 
you can sort of get this stun to the carotid artery, to that area to where the body thinks the blood pressure is really high, and it responds by making all the blood vessels really loose, which can decrease your blood pressure and make you pass out. Now, I don't know if it really fits with the timeline exactly of when he was walking off, but certainly we have to wonder about the possibility of sort of a stun to that carotid artery as causing some decreased blood pressure, potentially causing him to collapse. I don't know if it was something different about their evaluation when he collapsed that made them now concerned about a cervical spine injury, but regardless, that's why they have him in the neck collar here and on the backboard. The most recent report is that Profar is on his way to the hospital for further evaluation, but certainly it was a good sign to see that he looked to be fully conscious, moving his arms as he was taken off the field. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below, and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.